I don't think the formula was pretty clear in the last slide. So please have a look at this one. Um, try and point in that here. This is what you're supposed to be looking at. So this is the way we combine two belief functions m1 and m2 and create a third belief function. So this is sort of like combining the two evidences that Mary and Mike gave and then finally arriving at another evidence. So what does this formula actually tell us? So it is asking us to sum up all the subsets which have some sort of intersection between them and it is asking us to divide that by something called as a normalization factor. So this is called as a normalization factor. So we are going to divide this numerator with one minus of all the subsets which do not have an intersection between them. An example will help you understand this better. So let us look at a small scenario here. Let us consider that our set U, the hypothesis involved in it are the following ones. Flu, measles, cold and cough. So these are all the different diseases that could occur to a person. So let us initially assume that the M of U is 1. I mean that's obviously true because we know that a person obviously is having one of these diseases. Now let's say that we acquire an evidence. So this is evidence and this is hypothesis. So let's say we acquire an evidence fever. Let's say that the person has fever and then we know that fever supports these two hypotheses that is flu and measles. That is if a person has fever then he might have either flu or measles with a belief value of 0.8 so this is a belief value this is not a probability so we can write this function down as m1 of flu comma measles equal to 0.8 now this is an interesting thing that happens with dempster shaffer theory all of a sudden my m1 of u becomes 0.8 this might be confusing to you guys but this is how dempster shaffer theory works so what this is saying is, I have narrowed it down to these two diseases, flu and measles. So whatever is present in the rest of my universal set, that is maybe cold or cough, they only have a probability of 0.2. So that is what this M1 of U is equal to 0.2 means. Similarly, let's say that I have another evidence. So I have an evidence saying that headache is present in the person and then I have a rule supporting headache saying that someone having headache will have flu and cold with a belief value of 0.6 so now we can say that m2 of flu comma cold is 0.6 so just like what happened in the previous case our m2 of u becomes 1 minus 0.6 which is 0.4 now how do we combine m1 and m2 so here we draw out a small table and what does this table include? It includes the M2 values of flu and cold and U, M1 values of flu and measles and U. So these are the four belief values that we were able to find in this case. So now we are going to somehow combine these four belief values. So what happens here? Now this section, if you look at this section, I'm talking about this one. This is possible due to an intersection of this part and this part. So if you look at these two parts, the common hypothesis that they have is flu. So when I combine M1 and M2, in this case, the common thing I would be getting is flu. So I will only calculate the common belief of flu here with respect to M3. And how is this obtained? Let us go back to our formula. So what does it say? We are supposed to multiply the two belief values and we are supposed to sum up all those intersections. Here the only intersection we were able to find is with flu. So we just multiply 0.8 and 0.6 you will get 0.48. Similarly this section right here I am talking about the second section. 
here this is obtained by m1 of u comma measles this one and m2 of u which is equal to 0.4 once again what is the intersection here this is talking about the entire universal set and this is talking about flu comma measles so if you have an intersection between these two you would be getting m3 of flu comma measles now this would give you 0.32 once again this might be confusing but as i already said this is how dempster sharpe theory works the probability of your universal set just keeps decreasing each time but you are still talking about the entire set so it's once again the same thing similarly with m1 of u equal to 0.2 and m2 of u comma cold equal to 0.6 the intersection is m3 of u comma cold which is just the multiplication of these two which is 0.12 similarly you combine u and u you will still get another u so once again multiplication of these two you will get 0.08 so this is the way you were able to combine two belief functions m1 and m2 and then obtain a new belief function called as m3 now let's say we have another evidence this time i'm saying that the evidence is sneezing and then i know a rule which says that if a person sneezes then he might have cold and cough and the probability associated rather the belief of function associated with that is 0.7 so m4 of u will be 0.3 and similarly we are supposed to be combining m3 and m4 let's see how that pans out now let us see how we can combine m3 and m4 here as we have already seen m3 has four values and m4 has two values so if you draw out a new table you would be getting a total of eight values the interesting thing that you have to observe here is that we have some five belief sets so we have m5 of 5 and m5 of 5 here the reason why these occur is because there is no intersection between flu and cold and cough similarly no intersection between flu measles and cold and cough and that is the reason you have this phi which is being taken care of by this denominator so what are we doing with this we are basically doing a sigma so we are adding up all the Five belief sets. So in this case, we add up 0.336 and 0.224. We get 0.56. You subtract that value from one, you will be getting 0.44. So what are we doing with this? Now, if you are trying to assign some degree of belief to a phi set, that is to a null set, you are basically wasting some degree of belief there. So what we do by using Dempster's rule is that we distribute this degree of belief. to the rest of the belief functions so that we are not wasting this belief function value so here 0.44 is being wasted so that means 0.56 is being shared by all the other belief functions so what we are going to do is equally distribute that to each of the other elements as in we divide the first one like let's say m5 of flu has been derived to be 0.114 oh that was supposed to be i think it was supposed to be 144 so this was 0.144 and this when you divide it by 0.44 you get 0.327 which is a higher value so you are propelling each of these belief values to a higher value by distributing this value right here so that is all we do in the case of dempster's rule of combination now we have two more small concepts to look at this the first concept that you are going to look at is called as belief so belief is defined as the sum of all masses of subsets of a set a so let's say you have big set a and then there are a lot of small subsets inside it so if you combine all the mass masses of them that is all the belief functions of them then you would be getting it so if you were to like look at a pictorial representation of it this is it so you have a big set a here there are a few subsets inside it i have marked two of them b2 and b1 so you combine these two with the other ones so that is basically what belief is all about so the next question is what is plausibility 
So probability is the sum of all masses of sets B that intersect the set A. Right, remember, in the previous case, we were looking at all the subsets of the set A. Whereas here, we are trying to look at all the sets B. So please note the distinction. So if you were to look at a similar pictorial representation, this is what I am referring to as probability. So this right here, this yellow circle that you see here is your A. And these, whatever are present here, these are all your subsets. Now this B3 right here is another set which is intersecting with this set A. So what you do in the case of plausibility is you combine this particular B3 also with this set A and then you calculate a value that is called as plausibility. As you can clearly see in plausibility we are including more values when we compare that with belief. So belief is always less than plausibility. So the relationship that combines belief and actual probability value and plausibility is this. So belief of A is less than or equal to probability of A less than or equal to plausibility of A. And here are some useful properties that help us give more insight into this thing. So I don't think this is very clear but I'll try telling it out. So this is the first one. Plausibility of a null set that is phi is equal to the belief of a null set which is equal to 0. The second one this is a plus. I just messed it up. Anyway, belief of A plus belief of negation A is less than or equal to 0. So this is not always equal to 1. Similarly, probability of A plus probability of negation A is greater than or equal to 1. And the next one that you see is regarding the universal set. So when you talk, when you are looking at a universal set, that is the entire set, belief or plausibility, they both are equal to one. The most important one of all is this last one. So you combine belief of a negation of A with plausibility of A, that equals one. So it's sort of like saying that the plausibility of A is defined as one minus belief of negation A. So this is the only part, the only summation which equals 1 in the case of dempster Schaffer tool. So nothing else equals 1. So that is something that I want you guys to remember. So what is uncertainty? So I said that dempster Schaffer rule, it helps us understand the difference between uncertainty and ignorance. Now let us look at a small example here. With that, we'll close this chapter. Suppose we have a proposition called car as stolen our age old example. So over here, let's say the belief associated with this proposition is 0.6 and the plausibility associated with this proposition is 0.8. We know that we have a property like this. The last property says that the belief of negation A is equal to 1 minus plausibility of A. So from this, we can say that belief of negation A is equal to 0.2 right so you combine the belief in something with the belief against something you get 0.8 you're not getting a value equal to 1 so where is the remaining 0.2 that 0.2 is your uncertainty so pretty much that is what dempster Schaffer theory is all about if you guys understood this decently enough I have your fifth question for assignment number two, which is the example that I just shown you here. It is explained much more better in the textbook. All I want you guys to do is try understanding what is written in the textbook and then write in your own words. So this shouldn't be very hard. And thank you. We're going to look at fuzzy logic in the next chapter.